But I think if it results in a, ultimately a better experience for you as a customer, if you're able to solve your issues faster, or in fact, if you're able to have your issues addressed without even speaking to the bank, then I think customers will embrace it. So from my perspective, for the foreseeable future, this is about augmenting human productivity and really resulting in a better performance across the board. So welcome, it's a pleasure to have you both today. Uh, we're going to explore the concept of Genai and in digital banking in the financial sector, and I'd love to start with Mr. Mohammed. So, Mohammed, there's a buzzword now about Gen AI and what's happening in the financial sector. Can you tell us what you see, but also what you see is going to happen in the next few years in this sector? Yeah, well, look, thank you for having us. Uh, look, absolutely, Gen AI right now, I don't think you can complete a meeting without hearing the words, right? So uh, it's almost mandatory. Um, we do believe it's going to profoundly shift what we're seeing in banking. And this is borne out also by our research. Um, we did a survey quite recently of, 80, of uh, many CEOs in different banks, and over 85% said this would profoundly shift how their business operates. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the way I would characterize it is along two areas. So if we take a customer lens, it will dramatically shift the experience customers have when they interact with their banks. The interactions will be more personalized, they'll be faster, they'll be more accurate. Uh, if I think of it from a bank perspective, it will enable banks to run much more efficiently and much more effectively. So if we, if we talk, talk about an example, when a customer calls a bank in the future, the bank will know why they're calling and potentially already have a solution lined up. And as they conclude the interaction, they may also be able to suggest a different product or offering that suits the customer's needs. That's an interesting perspective because and we'll talk to Dr. Bernard about that in a minute, but it, there's a few things that he said there about personalizing the experience for the customers, understanding what their needs are, um, and addressing those more efficiently and effectively. Would you agree with the statement that he's made? And you know, how is that going to be possible with the implementation of Gen AI? I do agree with everything that Mohammed has said. The impact on customer experience and operational efficiency within the bank probably within every company and every industry, will be absolutely massive. I think there's a third element to that, and that's the productivity of our workforce. Uh, we started a pilot, uh, we were one of the pilot uh, companies in the region with uh, Microsoft Copilot uh, some time ago, and the impact it has had already on the productivity of our staff is significant in terms of summarizing meetings, minutes of meetings, uh, emails, summarizing documents, um, all of that already has a, a great impact. So it's customer experience, operational effic efficiency, and I would add uh, workforce productivity as well. Interesting, fantastic. But Mohammed, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, um, and continuing from the point uh, Dr. Byrne made about productivity of staff and more efficiencies, but then what impact is that gonna have, for example, on the number of staff that you now need? Is there going to be you know, more redundancies? Are there going to, you know, is AI now going to replace humans and, and the manpower and resources. What are your thoughts on that in particular? So it's a very important question. And I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. So I think we've heard a lot about massive displacement of jobs. We don't believe that'll be the case. I think as Dr. Burns said, a lot of institutions right now are leveraging Gen AI to augment people. So how to make them more effective, how to make them more efficient, more productive. And, and that's, that's where we see it predominantly for the time being. And, and this is, again, something we've, we've looked into with our clients across the globe. There will be, um, as with every innovation we've seen over the years, some jobs and some activities which will probably be no longer required. Think of very low, complex activities such as data processing, some elements of basic coding, um, but it is not probably as extreme as some people have said. And would you disagree or agree with, with the statement that Mohammed's made? No, I, I, I fully agree with Mohammed. For us, the key will be that through increased productivity, we will simply become better. Um, it will help us to grow the bank faster, to gain more market share uh, than we've already done. So from my perspective, for the foreseeable future, this is about augmenting human productivity and really resulting in a better performance across the board. 
Excellent. And so, Dr. Byrne, you talked about the positive aspects of Gen AI and the implementation, but what do you see as some of the challenges of the Gen AI? The biggest challenge is that we have to make sure that our, our people are able to use it in the right way. It requires a different way of thinking. It requires people to get used to the new technology, probably no different from when the internet first came around, Absolutely. right? But, it, but it, it is different. If you want to make the most out of generative AI uh, solutions, you have to understand how to use it. You have to understand that you ask questions in the right way uh, to your, your Gen AI solution. If you wanted to summarize a document, you cannot automatically assume that everything is the way that you want it to be. So there needs to be some, some checks into the system as well. So the, the, the constant uh, training, development of staff, um, the constant exposure of staff to the new technology as well, right? Because ultimately you, you will only really learn by using it is absolutely crucial. And Mohammed, what is your view on that? So Gen AI is going to be the new way forward. It's going to be implemented in all businesses. We've looked at what are the positive aspects. We've looked at some of the challenges. How do we c overcome the challenges of trying to have your staff adapt to this new way of implementing, but also being abreast of technology changes, which are changing so rapidly? And so how does a company keep abreast of those changes? It's very much about the people. And I think first and foremost, having a good grasp of what are the people, what are the skills, the type of people you need as an organization. I think it starts with that. I think second is having a good vision on what you want to achieve with this innovation, right? Because uh, innovation for the sake of innovation is not, is not something successful organizations do. And uh, linked very much to what Dr. Byrne said, I think it's important also on how you set yourself up to manage this, this development, right? So a lot of organizations are now debating what do we do in terms of harnessing Gen AI? Is it something we create ahead of Gen AI? Is this something we infuse throughout the organization where every business is doing it? You know, kind of the philosophy of let a thousand flowers bloom. Mm -hmm. the, the, these complex questions, I think, will be critical in positioning, you know, or differentiating between those who are very successful on, on leveraging generative AI versus those who are not. So Dr. Burned, we've just heard from Mohammed about the implementation in organizations and the importance of really um, you know, implementing it correctly and educating the staff and empowering them to use these new technologies. What I'd like to hear from you is some specific examples of the challenges of implementation of Gen AI within the bank and how have you as the CEO um, overcome those challenges or at least attempting to overcome those challenges? Yeah, I, th I think it's a process because we're clearly right. not there yet. But yeah. uh, other than making sure that your people understand how they can benefit from the new technology, uh, the other massive challenge we found is data. Quality of data, availability of data, accessibility of data. We have massive amounts of data. We, we do have. We know much more about our clients than, than almost anybody else. But making sure that the data is of the right quality that it's available, it's accessible, that has turned out to be a, a big challenge. So the way we approached it is, um, Mohammed was talking about two different models, like the centralization and the sort of uh, uh, dispersed model. We went for centralization, which works also given the size of the bank. We appointed the head of data and AI. Okay. And very clear, data comes first. Because if we don't get the data right, we will not be able to get the most out of this fantastic technology. Fantastic. So I heard lots of buzzwords there about the quality, about the accessibility of data. I mean, that's extremely important, as you've mentioned. But what I'm really interested to hear about is the privacy of data, because that's another really big issue that comes out of implementation of Gen AI. It sort of starts with protecting the data. So I think it's, it's again, data, AI, but it's also the cybersecurity element. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Like most organizations, we have made very significant investments in this space to make sure that we can protect this data at all time. Of course, we will also never share customer data um, outside of the country. We will never share customer data with third parties. This is really something that we, we keep to ourselves. We protect uh, uh, all of our customer data to the maximum extent possible. And it's interesting because I recently heard in terms of cyber attacks, it's not about, it's not a case of if, it's a case of when. And so companies have always got to be ready for when that time comes. And so what's your view on cyber security and protecting and, and taking a more proactive approach in the world of, you know, AI and, and the protection of data? And, and the UAE in particular being a very, you know, open market with people from all over the world is, is this is something that's very important to manage and 
both the regulator as well as the banks, right? This is something they invest a lot in and continue to invest a lot in. And we, we only see this becoming more critical as we advance uh, down this road. It's, it's also, it's interesting, but it's also an area where AI, perhaps not necessarily gen AI, but AI and machine learning can be mm -hmm. applied uh, very well. Uh, Self-learning algorithms that sort of learn from the threats and sort of are able to predict uh, or forecast some of the threats uh, will continue to play an, an, an ever imp, uh, increasing part in uh, in protection and in cybersecurity. So it's it on the one hand it becomes more important given the importance of data in AI and the way that you're going to use your data. On the other hand, AI itself will help you to protect that data much better. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting point. And Dr. Bernd, whilst you've just made that comment, I, I noticed what you were saying about using AI to help you know make predictions and to give us some you know more insight into the data that we're feeding into it. But one of the things that Mohammed did mention earlier that I picked up on was the hallucinations. So we still know that Gen AI is quite new. Applying it, using it, we have to do with up, utmost care. Um, how are you handling that challenge within, within the organisation that's using Gen AI to improve things, but also being fully aware that it's still very new and developing? And how do you tackle that problem? Yeah, it, it's, it's correct. It, it is a genuine issue. So uh, for the time being, I think uh, AI will be part of your decision making, but it will not be done independently. You have to make sure there has to be some element of explainability to whatever you get out of your uh, your Gen AI solutions before you really use it to credit score customers or decide on underwriting or anything of that nature. So it, it will help people. It, it's really, it will augment their capabilities. It will not replace them. Mohammed, do you have any uh, inputs or anything to add from what Dr. Byrne does just said with regards to you know trading carefully and using it within the limitations at the moment knowing full well what they are and developing into a sort of more um, you know detailed involvement of gen AI and implementation in the banking and finance industry in particular it, the, the points he made resonate a lot with me and I think it, it goes back to this governance and how you set it up right and I think uh, it's a great point that, that in CBD it's been done where you have the data and AI topic together and obviously going to the, to the CEO. So it has the right level of sponsorship. That's also very important, right? Sometimes people look at these innovations and they think it's a technology thing, right? So first is the sponsorship from the leadership, I think point one. Second is putting in the right controls and mechanisms in place, um, as Dr. Byrne said, about using it to augment and then having that check as opposed to just saying that now we have this innovation, it can kind of run very important topics that the bank is, is responsible for. And, and finally, continuously investing and also assessing what, what's working well and what's not, right? So that you can then uh, adjust and adapt as, as, as the banks move forward. If I could add to what Mohammed was saying, because it's, it's, it's a very good point. Nothing is easier than buying technology, yeah. really. Nothing is easier. And if people don't really know what they want to do, they typically start with buying all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's not the way to do it. And there was an interesting piece of research actually from Mohammed's firm, which says 70% of the challenge with implementing Gen AI in companies is people, mm -hmm. is having the right people, is having people understand the technology and understand how it can help them to become better, to become more productive. And I, I fully subscribe to that. The technology, this is not about technology. This is about people and making sure that people become better and become more productive. Technology is only a small part of that. Absolutely. I definitely agree with you. So technology is really just the tool that people are going to have to use and use wisely to improve efficiencies and productivity in the organisation. On that point, we looked at the current situation in the financial sector and implementing Gen AI. Can you tell me what are your thoughts about the next five to 10 years within this space and how Gen AI is going to transform the banking industry? Yeah, I think transform is the right word because that's really what's going to happen. And I, I, I think it's going to happen across all three uh, angles. It will be the customer experience. Customer experience will become more personalized, will really become relevant to the customer as well. Because nothing is more irritating than being uh, uh, contacted by a bank on something you don't need, will never need and never want to use. So really making that personalized and relevant to the customer is an, is an absolute key. Um, it will help in the, the uh, operational efficiency within the bank. Uh, I do foresee a time when uh, credit analysis 
uh, will to a large extent be, be started at least by Gen AI. There will be, a, of course, a human decision making, but it will, it will be started by, uh, by Gen AI. Um, Gen AI already plays a large part in transaction monitoring. Um, and anything related to that. I could also foresee it will help us whenever there's new regulation coming out, in a way, summarizing it for me and coming up with a plan on how to implement it. So it will really create massive operational uh, efficiencies uh, across the board and the productivity of our own people. To me, it's just a start today. The use of, of Gen AI in emails, in presentations, in minutes is a start. We will see this really sort of pervade everything across the board. Mohammed, I want to take the conversation over to you now because the buzzwords or the really key words that I think have come out of Dr. Burns' um, uh, statements uh, that it's about people and it's about technology. And arguably, when we are implementing technology in organisations, particularly in banks where they're dealing with customers, sometimes there's resistance from customers also in dealing with the AI or even understanding that you know the processes of the banks have now changed. I'm not speaking to a real person anymore. I don't go to the teller. I don't don't need to, you know, I could simply be speaking to AI over the phone and they already have a lot of my information. How is that change by the actual customer and user going to be, I suppose, uh, made easier in a sense? I think it, it really dry, it will be driven by how the banks leverage it to solve customers' issues. So I, I think, you know, if you force someone to do something, again, just for the sake of change, there will indeed be resistance, and even internally within the banks, right, the, the change management related to it. But I think if it results in a, ultimately a better experience for you as a customer, if you're able to solve your issues faster, or in fact, if you're able to have your issues addressed without even speaking to the bank, then I think customers will embrace it. I mean, look at you know mobile banking and these other innovations over the years, right? I'm sure there were many comments historically that you know people like talking to an individual. Why would they do something on the phone? And then you know we see with banks including CBD, you know, adoption rates of mobile in the high 90s, which is even greater than we see in other developed markets. So I think taking a customer first perspective, solving their issues will naturally drive adoption. To me, it's almost going back to the good old Turing test, right? Uh, um, the moment that a customer cannot distinguish and or cannot decide whether he's talking to a human being on the other side or to an AI, then it's, that's when it will really get successful. Mm -hmm. And that's the level uh, of, of sophistication that chatbots need to uh, achieve. Because when you look at, at many of the, the older type of chatbots uh, not being able to give you answer, the only thing you try to do is, is reach the human agent as soon as you can, right? Uh, by giving the right answers. I think the moment that you cannot even distinguish, that you cannot know whether you're talking to an AI or you're talking to a human, that's when it will be most successful. Thank you, Dr. Burned and Mohammed, for joining us today and giving us insight into the implementation of Gen AI in the financial sector. It's been a very insightful and compelling conversation, really. Um, and I think there's a bright future ahead for both the customers and the people within the, the bank. So thank you so much for the conversations.